We, Sheila Jackson Lee, who's not a member of this committee, we wanted to come in and make a statement that, and we were just running out of time, but I wanted to give her at least some time to get something in. And right there at the end, I think that was very profound, the point she made, and I wonder what you would thought of that, is that the suggestion that the president not meet with Maliki until he's agreed to at least extend the deadline on Camp Ashraf. What are your, all three of your opinions of that suggestion? Go right ahead, Colonel. Sir, first off, it's an outstanding suggestion. Maliki has been getting a free ride from our country. 2002, he was a street vendor in uh, Damascus, Damascus. Now, three years later, he was the prime minister. That man has made billions off the United States. And it pains me to see how much money this guy is getting. Joe Biden went over there and came back and said, oh, we overestimate the Iranian influence in Iraq. No, we don't overestimate, we underestimate. And the people in Iraq on the streets can't believe it. Somewhere, Maliki has to be made to understand that we're not taken in by his hype. And we are getting a solid understanding of what is really going on inside that country. He has been working with Ahmadinejad and his national security advisor, Rubier, has been feeding Iran all kinds of information. So what Sheila Jackson had said, I greatly think is a good idea because somewhere we need to bring this guy under control. And I also think telling Iraq, you're not getting all this money because we're tired of making your people in positions of power very wealthy at the expense of the Iraqi people. Except Kurdistan, they're living in poverty. Sir, I yield. Okay. Dr. Ferris. I was very intrigued when she asked that question. It seemed a very direct response to a, a very difficult situation. Um, I think the U.S. has a lot of diplomatic economic tools that can be used to make it clear that there are certain limits. The, the deadline must be extended for closing the camp. The solutions must be found, and we should use every means we have. I didn't know about this Section 3, but to me that sounds also like something we should pursue in terms of the way that the arms that we have supplied have been used. Ambassador, let me um, suggest that you are a very knowledgeable person. If there is another massacre, the people at our State Department, if they have not removed this uh, uh, designation as a terrorist organization, they are resp partly responsible, if not culpable, if, uh, if not uh, some kind of type of an accomplice, in committing this murder, and uh, until and frankly, you're right. Things will get settled, but they're only going to be settled when those of us are willing to stand up and basically hold specific individuals accountable and kick them out if they don't if they do the wrong thing and uh, and not just let these pe people who've been making these kind of decisions continue in power. Go, you can answer that, Mr. If I could just say, Mr. Chairman. Um, it seems to me we have people in the room who have friends and relatives inside the camp. They are human beings. Many of them are educated human beings. They have, uh, uh, they have a lifestyle which is, would surprise a lot of people. They're very worldly in many cases. This is a train wreck that hasn't happened yet. And not only uh, is it imperative that it not happen, but I believe our reputation in Europe, if you mention the Europeans, they're watching this very closely. And I'm not here to say I know the one thing that will fix the, the whole thing. I know you're very focused on the listing issue. I've tried to be extremely careful to, to simply deal with the facts. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to put on the record uh, the summary of, of my inquiry into this. And I will just close with some following observations, and that is, uh, number one, uh, the Mullah regime will someday fall. And let us make sure that these uh, brave souls at Camp Ashraf, uh, who have stood as a symbol of resistance to the Mullah regime, are able to go home to a free and democratic Iran once the Mullah regime is is over and uh, that will happen the mullahs are not a democratic government they are a government that re totally represses their opposition controls the means of communication 
uh, and, and actually rules that country uh, as a theocracy. And that is not the will of the Iranian people by a large number of the Iranian people. So let's hope that that day comes soon. Uh, we're not doing this just because we owe it to the people of Camp Ashraf. As human beings, we believe that God gives rights to all human beings. We respect them. But we're also doing it because this will have a huge impact on the stability and the well-being of the entire region and the world. And yes, the stability region, uh, and security of the people of the United States. Uh, so uh, this hearing, I think, has added a great deal to the discussion. And hopefully it will... Uh, uh, result in action being taken in these next two and three weeks that will prevent another tragedy like we saw just a short time ago. And with that said, this hearing is adjourned.